Hello everyone, welcome to EU4. We are taking a look at the new expansion DLC that just came out, The Rights of Man. And it's going to be a simple, quick look through. We're not going to play it like a really big, huge campaign or anything. So we're going to go to the Revolutionary France starting point. We're going to pick Great Britain, who is one of the leading powers. And you kind of need to be a leading power to really experience the full impact of what this uh, DLC brings. So we're just going to call it Great Britain. Britain. And we're going to start. And here we are. See, we have a lot of things that we can do to start out with real quick. But before we dive into the, any of that, we're going to look at what will first be noticed. And this is the Great Powers menu. And you can see we are one. We're rated number four out of all the great powers, which will give us some pretty good bonuses that we can take a look at. So if we go to Diplomacy, let's click on France, and we go down and there's a new tab that says Great Powers Actions. So we can take on foreign debt, we can influence them towards our viewpoint, we can make them break an alliance with someone, which they'll absolutely say no to at this point, uh, or we can intervene in a war against them. So, if we wanted to intervene in the War of the First Coalition, just simply to, oh, I guess this would be intervene on their behalf. Okay, good to know. So if we go over to Austria and say intervene in war, you can only intervene if there is an imbalance of great powers and you are joining the weaker side. Okay. Good to know. Prussia is not a co-belligerent. Yeah, so those are kind of the four big things that great powers get to do that only they get to do, and there's only eight of them on the board. So we're going to go to rivals, and we're going to declare our rivals France, Spain, and I guess the Qing Dynasty. Since they have us declared, we're not going to declare ourselves defender of the faith. But we are going to choose a native policy, which we're going to call a trading-based policy. And we have too many military leaders. Let's see how many we have. Uh, George. Vancouver is an explorer, and we've kind of already explored a little bit, so we don't really need that. So we're going to dismiss him, and that causes that to go away. We're going to select our mission, uh, establish a base Rule the seas. Have less heavy ships than uh, any known country has less ships. Or we take over Canton, which is right here. Yep, it's that province right there. Or we can establish rules in the Spice Islands, or, or just our presence. Um, we're going to rule the seas because we want um, to, we want to, basically we want to prepare for the war with France. And we have a lot of religions we can conform, or reform, not conform. And it looks like most of them are in India, except for Scotland and Ireland. So, tolerance of heretical beliefs, not very good. So we, we dislike everyone who's not. We're going to found the East India Trade Company. We're going to pass the Popery Act and do all that. So now it should take a little bit less time to convert all these. Tolerance of heretics is really low, so we're going to start. Mm -hmm. I guess we're at shortest. Yeah, we're going to. Well, actually, who will have the most unrest? Separatist, separatist. Gaelic separatist, Scottish separatist, Catholic zealots, reformed.
reformed zealots. We'll have 36,000 men. All right, so let's start chipping away at reformed. The power base of the Reformation movement. And this is new. This, um, we can now look at our court, which shows us our uh, reigning monarch, our heir, and any sort of upcoming heir we could have if something happens to our current heir. So we can see their traits, we can see uh, what kind of effect they'll have, and we can also see their administrative skills and how those will be changing. And we have all of our advisors that we can pick. We are currently making 40. So... Let's see. We could do production efficiency for 10. And he's pretty young, so we'll keep him. Global tariffs is good. Diplomatic reputation, morale of navies. Let's do the global tariffs, get some income. It'll cost 24 a month to keep him, but he'll give our armies plus 10 morale. Um, yeah, let's recruit him as an advisor. Now this tab is entirely new. Um, this is now the government tab. It takes a few things over from the other, or from the previous installation. But now you can promote cultures and move cultures into the accepted culture on your own by spending some culture points or diplomatic points, but only after they've accumulated enough development. So basically, once they contribute to the empire enough, they can become part of what is defined as the empire. And we can also kick people out. So right now, it looks like uh, if we wanted... Uh, we could add the Bengalian culture group, which is, where are they? They are part of the Eastern Aryan. So yeah, here they are. So yeah, we got a lot of um, Bengali people living under the yoke of the British Empire. And is that unpassable terrain? Looks like it is. Yeah, they added, that's new. They added a new unpassable terrain there. I wonder why they did that. But anyway, no new buildings, nothing like that. Mostly just changes in diplomacy and government management. Uh, we can abdicate our heir, or, or our, um, we can abdicate our monarch if we don't like him, and if we don't like our heir, we can disinherit him for a shot at a better one. But other than that, that are that is kind of the biggest um, changes you'll find. So we're going to split. Yeah, we're going to build some of these guys off. How many military leaders do we have? Three. Bannister Tarleton, the Army of Scotland, the Royal Army is going to have its own leader. I could have sworn we had more leaders than that. Oh. Looks like we have two. Oh, huh. Okay, let's look at the big fleet. Big fleet right here. We'll be under the command of Lord Nelson. We're going to combine them. And we're going to split off all of those uh, trade. Move that unit to Essex. And then we're going to start a building project. We're going to go down to Oxfordshire and build a university there because, you know, we just have to. We have to build a university in Oxford. And then I think that will be it in terms of the treasury for now. And what we do have is an army under the command of Bannister Tarleton. And surprisingly, we don't have um, Wellington as a commander yet. But we're going to pass the weapon quality standards, because that's just a good one to have. And we 
organized marines. We can afford a lot of military uh, acts and policies because, I don't know if you saw earlier, but our uh, military ranking is very high compared to everything else. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get some acts for the military. And it's up, really up to chance. Recover army morale speed, land leader fire, manpower recovery. Let's do the mining act so we can get some good uh, firepower. So now, yeah, his firepower has been up to three. And we're going to give this ship missions to protect trade in the English Channel. Because we're not at war with France yet. That'll probably come later. Yep. Yep. We gain 100 gold. And we're about to lose an alliance. People do make them reconsider by improving relations. Let's oh yeah, let's go ahead and try this. Let's use some great power actions to influence them to our viewpoint. Portugal just got bumped up to a great power status. Good for them. And everyone gets plus one merchant by adopting global trade. So there will be a one-time cost, 170 to carry out this political mover, maneuver. So we're going to do that. We're going to influence their nation towards us. And at the same time, we're not going to do anything because we already sent a diplomat to them. So we need to, s basically we're just going to see and wait to see what will happen. We're building ships here. Yeah, we are. We're building three-decker. And after that, we should be building forget or, n yeah, we're great forget. Okay. Uh, overseas expansion on Date. We're not invading Japan. There's no reason. So, yeah, this is everything that's changed. And it's... I think it's a good expansion. Because, you know, this is just everything I've observed up to this point. And we're losing some money. I wonder why. Um, root out corruption, missionary maintenance... Uh, Royal Marriage Office from the Netherlands. Sure. We like the Netherlands. Oh. Yep, and then all the stuff's going to start rolling in. So, basically, this is, this is the update uh, on the surface level what will be the most obvious in front of people when they download it and take a look. This is what they'll see. That will be the most obvious things. Um, I will be starting a full campaign probably who knows uh, this interesting German flag kind of. Um, but oh did Dekan break their alliance with us? Uh, yep, looks like they did. So, uh, rights of man adds a new government, new court, new politics, and basically look for more to come in the future. Prob probably from the start, because, you know, this is very late game and it would be a very short campaign to start it here and carry on with Britain, but we'll probably do something. Uh, if there's any specific start you want me to do, just let me know.